I've got to put the brakes on the restoration for a moment because if I just come to a normal stop, this happens. Since I like the car to be able to come to a complete stop without going into a skid on the passenger side, it's time for me to get the car in the air, get it safe, and see what's going on. It's been many years since I've had to mess with the brakes, but this amount of brake dust was the first warning sign. I'll take pictures before I take anything apart. After cleaning, I inspect the shoes and see the first issue. They're cracked. I've got to take the shoes off to be able to present them for a lifetime warranty to get them replaced, and I make quick work out of getting them off the car. Another thing I like to do is lay out hardware as it's removed. So we're here on the problem side. I've taken it all apart, then I gave it a simple green bath, and I'm glad that I got to this point because when I took off this rubber boot here, I found a rust inside of here, and that gives a root cause as to why I was having the problems that I was having. So these wheel cylinders, you can rebuild them for about $3, or for about $10, you can get a brand new Genuine AC Delco wheel cylinder. So that's what I did. I've got brand new hardware, I'm gonna get it put on. These new shoes I got with the lifetime warranty are not riveted, they're just glued. All right, we've got the problem wheel cylinder replaced. Now we move to the other side of the car. You should always replace braking components in pairs. So we got a wheel cylinder for this side. I'm gonna put that cylinder on and I'm gonna show you how to replace the rest of the brake hardware on this side. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do here is place my front shoe. You're gonna get two shoes and the way you tell your front one on these GM products is one is gonna be shorter if you put them side by side. So this one right here, is my front shoe. Now before I install it, I'm gonna take brake grease because there are lands where this shoe will rub against. We wanna make sure that these are lubricated. Now to mount this shoe, I bought some brand new hardware. This is about $7 a side. I did have to get this brought in the auto parts store. They didn't have it off the shelf. So this is what a spring to hold the shoe will look like. This little guy goes behind it. I'll put a little grease on that. This goes on top of it. One of these guys that looks like nails goes from the back through that spring. I'm gonna use some fancy tools to put it on, but you can use whatever's handy, works, and doesn't hurt the stuff. Now this shoe is set. The next thing we're gonna do is put our rear brake shoe on. Now there are two holes in my brake shoe for this. We're gonna look back at our pictures to know that we need to go into the top hole. This clip will go around it. We're gonna use a pair of pliers to cinch that up. Now getting the back shoe on is gonna be a little bit more fun than the front shoe because we've got the parking brake assembly at the back. We've got the self adjuster that's got to go on the front which has got its own spring. And then we've got the brake shoe to sandwich in between it while we put that nail through the back. I then lubricate and wipe off the excess for the pins that go between the wheel cylinders and the brake shoes. The hold down is installed. This red rod called the actuator link is installed. And then after that, this long bar called the parking brake link is installed. Next thing I'm gonna do is put in my first spring. I know where it goes because I have the picture from before. This is gonna thread in and be pulled to connect to the actuator link. Now onto the orange one, facing forward. I'm going right here. It's gonna pull up over there. That is always a pain. Now, the adjuster, and it's Springer next, and the adjuster comes in three pieces. You'll want to take this apart and lubricate it and put it back together before you reinstall it. If for some reason yours is messed up, you can also buy these off the shelf at the auto parts store. All right, there we go. The last step is to clean off just the shoes. We don't want to wash off the grease we just put on. We're going to put the drum on, go through the adjustment process, after that, we'll move on to the front brakes for an inspection. 
I'm glad I took a look at the front brakes because as you see here, after the fact, many shiny new parts, right? We got a new wheel cylinder and I actually put new wheel cylinders on both the passenger side and the driver's side because they were rusted, just like the back brakes. Or you can also see that this self-adjuster is brand new. I didn't like the way that it was working, so I put a new one on on both sides. So now I'm gonna get this button back up and then it's time to bleed the brakes. Now, since we replaced the wheel cylinder, we need to bleed the brakes. In 2015, I replaced the single master cylinder with a dual master cylinder. So it may look different than yours, but the functionality is the same. I wanna go ahead and replace the DOT5 fluid before I flush it. So I'm just taking a turkey baster here and I'm gonna pull the old fluid out. I'm gonna go almost down to the bottom, but not down so far that I'm introducing air into the system. With the old stuff out of the way, I'm gonna put in a brand new jug of DOT5. Now, air is the worst enemy of a DOT5 system. We've got a lot of tiny air bubbles in here right now. I'm actually gonna leave this open but covered overnight so that that air can work itself out so that we don't have a spongy pedal. Alrighty, we have let this brake fluid sit overnight so we don't have any bubbles in it. And now it's time to bleed the brakes. What I'm gonna use is some of these speed bleeders which allow brake fluid to come out but air not to go in. So I'm gonna go put those in, bleed the brakes. All right, it's time to put the car through its paces. My test drive was good, but I've got a grinding noise out of this, the passenger rear. So I want to take this drum off. Everything looks fine as far as springs, but aha. Uh -huh. See that line on the inside of the drum? That shouldn't be there. That means the shoes are rubbing. So let's figure out how we're going to fix it. It turns out sidewalk chalk will make easy work of determining a rubbing pattern. I'll reinstall the drum and install a couple of lug nuts to keep it on during the test. Looking over the brake shoes really well, I can see a couple of points of contact here. On this side, all in this area, we've got contact right down here. I've actually got shiny metal where the paint is worn away. On this side, I've also got some contact right here. And what I've come up with is just the fact these shoes are bonded, right? They're not riveted, and I can actually feel how this friction surface is above this metal. And it's the same way right here. Like right here, it's below, but then up here, it's above, where I think that it's just gotten kind of cockeyed when it got glued at the factory. So, let's bring out the die grinder. The side's cleaned up pretty and there's no more ridge. So we're gonna chalk it again and give it another test. I took a little break to compare before and after video to make sure I wasn't seeing anything that wasn't there. Nothing is rubbing. So now it's time to give it a bath, get that drum back on and take it down the road for another test. Let's do a threshold braking test and see how we did. Oh yeah, no locking up. We're good to go. Thank you for watching.